Hey guys, it's me Adam from Unstoppable Acting Studio and in this video I'm going to share some golden acting lessons that we can learn from Konstantin Stanislavski. Konstantin Stanislavski, he's like the godfather, the dawn of acting technique or certainly truthful, realistic acting technique. Before Stanislavski's influence, acting was much more based around the realm of gesture and imposing emotions rather than it having come from a, a very truthful place. So there's many, many things we can learn from Konstantin Stanislavski. Let's just look at a few of the fundamental ones in this video. First up, the importance of having an objective and a super objective as an actor. Let's look at the super objective first. Now, the super objective is the thing that the actor is gearing towards constantly throughout the play, the film, or the, the TV script. It's the thing that they want most of all, if they could achieve it, then their lives would be magnificent. And there's an argument that it could be within the life of the, the play or the TV or the film script, or indeed it could be achieved by the end of that character's life. Because all the characters that we play, they have usually a life before the script starts and a life when the script ends as well that goes on. Past the, past the moment. So this is the thing that they're striving towards and gearing towards getting. It is usually quite a big thing. It is usually something that is fundamental to the makeup of them as a human being, that they need to achieve. They have a burning desire and a need to achieve it. My recommendation for a super objective is not to have it as a big, long, rambling paragraph of what you want and why you want it and things. If you can contain it in a punchy, sentence, then this is an anchor point that you can use again and again when you're working on that character to align with what does my character want ultimately. You can just check in with it. So if it is that your character wants to be loved, then that's the simple thing, right? You can always be checking in with, I want to be loved. Yeah, We can go into the nuances and all that stuff of why they want to be loved and why they feel they're not loved, but if they want to be loved, that's always a thing that you can align with throughout the whole entire script that you're working on. So the super objective is the anchor point for the whole picture for your character. An objective is then chunked up throughout moments throughout the script that you're working on. So objectives are shifting. They change from moment to moment depending on what your character is, is achieving here, what they want to be doing. And then um, sometimes objectives can be achieved quite quickly and other times they might try to achieve the objective and, and fail due to a, a number of different circumstances or obstacles, which we'll talk about in a little second. An objective, usually a good rule of thumb for an objective is going into each scene that you have a set objective of the thing that you want to achieve. What kind of change do you want to make or what kind of thing that you want to achieve as, a, as an actor in that scene? And then um, it can be things like, I want to kill the person um, that you're in the scene with, or I want the person to know that I love them, or, you know, things like that. It's usually an I want statement that, that is wrapped up in an objective. And, and yet again, you don't want to be doing a big, long, rambling paragraph about this. You want it punchy. You want it to be a sentence. You want it to be an anchor point that you can check in on going into each scene. So that you have the super objective, this overriding thing that you want from the whole of the script, but you also have these little moments, scene to scene, um, usually scene to scene, of things you want to achieve in between. Now, obviously, if we could all get what we wanted in life, as well as on the stage or when we're acting, then it would be a perfect world. And uh, if that character that wants to be loved shows up in the first couple of minutes of, of the scene and everybody loves them, and all of a sudden they think, well, my life is fulfilled, end, end play, end scene. It would be a bit of a boring thing to watch as an audience. The thing that we like as audiences to watch is seeing the character go through some kind of struggle. Seeing them want something, but seeing them have to struggle to get there. I know, sick, sadistic, are we as an audience? But we want to see them striving towards that. Now, they, those take the forms of obstacles, things that are in our character's way to get the thing that we want. So obstacles can be dressed up in many different guises. It could be other characters are physical obstacles to us getting towards 
our ambition. A, a father who denies us the love that we have for somebody, for instance. Obstacles could be ourselves, the, our characters that we're playing. They could be, in spite of themselves, get in the way of us wanting to achieve something. Like, maybe the character's overriding thing is they want to be sober. They, they want to live a life clean of, of drugs or, or, or drink. However, they also have this burning need and desire to physically have drink or drugs in, the, in their body. That would be an obstacle that is sort of to do with the self as well. Um, there's also probably mitigating factors of their environment that maybe stops them from getting to the thing that they want overall. So there's many different obstacles as well to consider as an actor going in to play a character. So obstacles does touch upon this, this, this factor as well about given circumstances that if we take uh, your character showing up at somebody's house for the first time, there's a number of mitigating given circumstances that affect how the character might feel when they show up to, to that place. For example, the journey that they just had on the way to get there, the time of day that it is, what they've just experienced before they've stepped into the household, what they've maybe heard in the house, maybe they've overheard the people speaking and they were speaking about them. Maybe they've heard the voices speaking about the character that you're playing. All of these things are going to have different effects on your character going into the scene. So these are things also to consider the given circumstances of entering a scene. Now, as actors, we are given lines of dialogue to say and, and to speak. And if the job of an actor was just to read out these lines of dialogue, it would be quite an easy job, right? we could be reading anything. In fact, the audience wouldn't even need to show up to see the thing because they could just read the lines of dialogue themselves and get the same experience. What our job as actors are is to, or part, a big part of what our job as actors are, is to fill in the gaps of the in-between times, the moments that we don't necessarily see that are written in the script. As I mentioned earlier in this video, our character has a life before the play or the TV script or film script starts, and they also have a life afterwards as well and just because our character are given a set amount of words to say well there's nothing to say that there aren't any thoughts and feelings and desires that are going on underneath those words as well that basically we need to fill in the gaps of the lines between the lines what's our character thinking how are they feeling in between this is what Stanislavski calls subtext this idea that there's lots of thoughts and feelings going on under the surface that is not necessarily ever expressed in words. And finally, we're going to talk in this video about Stanislavski's fundamental questions. Who, what, where, why, when is basically what it is. Now, now how is this advantageous to an actor? Well, who, you need to know who you are talking to. There's quite often, as an acting coach, I, I work with actors and I say, who who are you talking to in this scene? And they say, oh, I'm talking to myself, or I don't really know who I'm talking to. The idea is that as actors, we're always talking to someone or something. We're always trying to make a change in the target that is in front of us. And if you don't have that explicitly described to you by the, the playwright, by the scriptwriter, you need to make a decision on who you are talking to, because it's going to add so much to the life, the inner life that's going on for you as an actor, if you are able to, to do that. When we're talking to a friend, we're very different to when we're talking to our boss at work or we're talking to a whole room of people and we're presenting to them. But even if you think you're talking to yourself in the, in the monologue, why not make a decision as to you're talking to a younger version of yourself or you're talking to yourself in the future, try to warn yourself about some of these things that might happen. You should always be talking towards a specific person. So that's the who. What? Well, what are you doing in the scene? Right? What are you trying to achieve? What change are you trying to make? And, and I guess in the, the what as well, what is your objective that you're striving towards? Where? Well, hopefully you, you've been given a bit of an explanation as to where you are in a scene in the, in the script that you're working with. But if you haven't, this is where you engage your imagination to really be specific about where you are. 
and where everybody else is in the room, right? Is the person right next to you that you're talking to or are they far away? And is there the potential of other people to overhear what you're, you're speaking about? Right down to what the whole room looks like yeah, that, that you're in or the whole environment, what it looks like when you're in. So you can start to engage the, the sense memory, which is obviously if we're outside on a summer's day and we can smell the beautiful flowers, that's going to affect us in a very different way as an actor than being in the soaking rain, which is quite often the weather we have here in Scotland. Why? Why is perhaps the most important of the questions, in my opinion. Why is your character there? Why are they saying the words that they're saying? And because otherwise, why, why does the scene need to exist? Yeah, like to engage with why they are doing it, why they need to be there is a fundamental key into propelling yourself towards being an actor who's striving towards something in the scene and striving to achieve something in the scene. When? Well, we can look at this in a few different ways. You could look at when as in like year-wise when it happened. So obviously if it's a historical piece, there are some considerations, some research that you need to put in as to the when it happened. If something happened 300 years ago in Russia, for instance. But also we could look at the minutiae of, well, if the play is set in the modern day, when is it as in what time of year is it? As in what time of day is it? Because we have very different feelings in the morning to really late at night. So if you can be as specific as possible as to the when it's happening as well, that's going to be very advantageous as an actor. So, whoa, that's a whole ton of uh, different bits, different snippets of information. And I'm only able to touch the surface in the short video today. I highly recommend if you're interested in this sort of thing that we've been talking about in the video, I've linked a number of different Stanislavski resources to take this thing further for yourself and to squeeze out all the juice you can um, so you can add to your, your toolkit, your techniques as an actor as well. Stanislavski, I guess the through line, the overall pattern here to all that I've said is he's a big believer in being as specific as possible with your intentions, with why you're there, with your imagination as you possibly can. Be specific. If I could boil it down to one thing, it's be specific in your choices as an actor. So thanks very much for watching that video today. If you got any value from it at all, I would hugely appreciate you clicking that like button and clicking that subscribe button. And until next time, my friends, be unstoppable.